I am mining investor and editor of Resource Stock Digest. It's back to Gerardo Del Real, not Gerardo this week. Here with my partner, Mr. Nick Hodge, who is also an investor and the publisher of Daily Profit Cycle. This is the 231st episode of our weekly therapy session that we like to call Investing in Bizarro World. We're going to talk about markets. We're going to talk about lithium and copper this week and then critical metals and why we're still really excited and think there's a ton of opportunity there. Um, We're going to talk a bit, you know, about all the different madness that's going on around the world. Um, Really some fourth turning uh, level uh, events and catalysts that are happening on a global scale. So a lot to get into as there usually is. Before we get into all of it, Mr. Hodge, how goes you this week? I'm doing great, Gerardo, getting these um, kids through their final summer camps and and gearing up for the back to school. And I'm looking forward to that tick up in activity in the markets as we get into uh, a cooler temps and and conference season here. So I'm doing good. How are you? I I am well. Thank you for asking. I'm also looking forward to that tick up as you described it. Uh, And in in news, look, there's a lot of, uh, we touched on this a couple of weeks ago, but there's a lot of companies that have to be sitting on news, waiting for September, waiting for conference season. Um, for the simple fact that, you know, there's drill programs that have been ongoing for months on end and uh, we haven't seen any assays yet. So I think it's going to be an exciting September um, and I think it's going to be a hot August. I mean, I, I, I want to start out by saying, you know, condolences to everybody in Maui. I mean, you look at some of those scenes and the destruction there and look, there's there's tragedy going on all around the world, right? And so... It's 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 a tough time, but it's really tough to see a place that um, one day is so amazing. You know, we had a, a colleague of ours that was just there a week ago and, um, you know, talked about one wonderful experience he had with everybody. And to see to see a part of that just completely destroyed heart goes out to everybody out there. And I hope that, um, you know, as we continue to send hundreds of billions of dollars to the Ukraine, I, I hope we can look home a little bit, maybe take care of uh, some of our own here as well because Hawaii most definitely will be needing it. Yeah, this devastating fire is super fast moving. We were there in 2021, and my kids absolutely loved it, and they always ask, Why, when are we going back? It, it might be a little bit uh, before we can get back to Lahaina specifically, but but maybe another era, uh, area um, in the near future. So obviously, best wishes to them. And yeah, um, you were just telling me before we started recording how it's been above uh, 100 degrees in Austin for however long, and even up here in Washington State, it'll be triple digits next week. So um, we continue to boil, and that's um, one of the reasons, um, you know, all this electrification and, and decarbonization stuff continues to be in the uh, in the headlines. Look, 37 straight days of 100 degree plus weather Fahrenheit here uh, in Austin, in Round Rock, in the Georgetown area, where. Um, we reside and look, I love the heat, right? But my morning jogs have been absolutely brutal for the past couple of weeks, especially. Um, so look, there's definitely a lot going on. I I mentioned the fourth turning, there was a presidential candidate in Ecuador, um, that was assassinated. And so, you know, seven Colombian nationals were arrested. Clearly it was organized. Um, it's just a, a, a lot of chaos going on around the world, but you mentioned the electrification of everything. And we've talked about the hilariously named Inflation Reduction Act and how, you know, the name is one of the most hypocritical names for a piece of legislation I think this country has seen in recent times. And it takes away from a lot of the good, a lot of the meat and potatoes inside that act, because there's a lot, a lot of incentives in there to really establish what what we should have been doing, you know, decades ago when we fell behind to China, but to really establish an independent domestic critical metal supply chain that can include you know, Canada, that can include some of our trading partners to diversify away from the reliance on Chinese critical metals, which, again, China's looking to become a superpower, um, rightfully so, the way that we did. And so one of the big strategic advantages that it has over us is our reliance on those critical metals. So I mentioned off top that I am just chomping at the bit to see the copper and lithium space continue to develop. And I think there's so many opportunities that um, are going to make us a lot, a lot of money if we're patient, if we're disciplined, and, you know, if, if, if we're a little lucky. But it's been a good uh, been a good couple of years. Don't get them all right. Nobody does. But the ones we've gotten correct have been big, big wins. And, and, and frankly, it's been the core positions, the ones 
where we've allocated the bulk of our capital that have really outperformed. And I think I got another one um, that has a lot of similarities to Patriot Battery Metals, which of course, you know, has been life-changing for so many different people. You all continue to write in and I'm, I'm, I'm truly thankful for all the kind words that everybody's written in. Um, a lot more to go there with Patriot, but you know, I have one that is early, early stages, as in hasn't ever been drilled by this group. And there's, and I hate this word usually, there's a lot of synergies between the two companies. And, and I think, um, you know, I'll have a special report on that here next week for paying subscribers. I think we're going to do incredibly, incredibly well. Um, I'm an early, you know, speculator in the stock. I've written a couple of checks. I will continue to do so. And I suspect those checks will be at much, much higher prices. I'm looking for quadruple digit gains with this one again, Nick. Hey, so uh, let's take a step back and 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 just reiterate, you know, how much growth is occurring in the in the lithium market. And then, um, if you don't mind, I might ask you a couple of questions about um, that deposit, um, why it's similar, uh, not only geologically but uh, as as far as the team is concerned as well. So, um, in in 2022, the world produced something like um, 600,000 tons of lithium, 678,000 tons to be specific. Um, and this year it'll need uh, some 900,000 tons. But then by 2035, we're going to need 4 million tons. So uh, by 2035, you're going to need, call it five times as, as much lithium um, as we're mining now. And uh, you've seen just the absolute scramble for uh, these companies to get involved uh, all the way f you know to the automakers now partnering with um these global auto uh, or the global auto manufacturers partnering with these lithium producers and and lithium developers um and 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 it might be worth noting um how that's shifting west westwardly you mentioned how you know china controls a lot of the uh, refinement and, and purification of, of battery metals, specifically um, lithium, and how um, the inflows to China to they don't they don't mine all the lithium, but they do refine a significant portion of it, and 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 and, and the bulk of that comes from you know hard rock assets in in Australia, which are spodumene based um, lithium pegmatites, and and that's one of essentially currently two uh, types of of lithium extraction. The other one being brine. Um, which there is some in, in the United States, but it's mostly sure. concentrated in, in South America in the, the lithium triangle, which many people are familiar with, right? Argentina, Chile, um, and Bolivia. And you also mentioned the Inflation Reduction Act. So I'm um, tying it all together. That act is trying to incentivize increased, not only lithium mining, but um, you know refining and, and upgrading as well. Um, and we've talked a, a bit about how spodumene lithium is easier to get into hydroxide form, which is better for the types of batteries that the uh, sector is is going toward at this time. And so, um, yes, Patrick, Patriot Battery Metals has a huge discovery of this specific type of lithium in Quebec. Um, yes, they've already had some, you know, strategic buyers come in. Um, you know, the formal deal recently was with Albemarle, who can build that downstream plant um, in North America to satisfy the requirements to get those um, subsidies. And so, uh, and it wants Patriot, to. <laughs> and it wants to. Absolutely. Right. I mean, these companies, yeah, they love that government. They love that government, government money and they're looking to expand. Um, and it's obviously very expensive to bring that spodumene from Australia. So they're looking now for North American sources, right, to consolidate the industry. You mentioned synergens, right? So they can have their production yeah. here in North America um, and the refinement as well. Um, and, and so, and what I was going to say is that Patriot Battery, for as big of a deposit as it is and is going to be, you know, they're still developing or they're still exploring and have oh, a lot yeah. more drilling to do. And we're going to need a lot more lithium deposits, right? When we talk about how many new lithium deposits are going to have to come online in the next 10, 15, 20 years. Um, and that brings me up to this um, other company that we were discussing, right? right? So um, I guess let's start with, um, let's start with the geology and then go to the team. So um, I guess explain uh, why it's similar in location and why it's similar um, in geology and why it could be potentially similar in grade and size. I, I, I don't, I'm not going to answer the question about the team because if I answer the question, um, a lot of you will guess the name and that wouldn't be fair to paying subscribers. However, 
I will say that um, th- th- there's a lot of friendly uh, Patriot Patriot Battery Metal CEO Blair Way described the lithium industry and obviously everyone's approach to Patriot as very friendly. And I will say that there is a lot of friendliness between the two groups. I'll leave it at that. Um, in regards to the geology, look, I'm no geologist. Um, I pride myself on being a simple guy. I, I, I often make, you know, high risk, high reward bets that are over leveraged that when they pay off uh, can be life changing. And, and, and when they don't work out, you know, I, I take my losses like a big boy. We all know what we're doing. We're big boys, big girls in the speculating game. Um, you don't take any of my gains and you don't take or book any of my losses. And I hope that everyone comes into the space with that attitude. But without that being said, when I looked at Patriot initially, what really attracted to me to it was the fact that there was already historic sampling. The outcrops were high grade. Um, you knew the intensity of the system um, was likely going to hold up because of how spread out those outcropping lithium pegmatite clusters were, right? The CB5s, the CB13s, the CB9s. There were the, the, there were already historical records and historic sampling in the area. What, there, what, what hadn't happened is nobody had really thought to go in there and explore exclusively for lithium because people forget the Corbett district is also very prospective. Um, to copper and gold. I mean, they've had some phenomenal copper and gold hits along that belt. And obviously they get zero credit, rightfully so. Corvette is going to end up being one of the top, if not the top, you know, lithium, this type of lithium deposit in the world, on the planet. There's five rigs turning now. Blair wants to add another five before year end. Um, They're building a camp to that end. And if all that goes as planned, we're going to have year round drilling and 160 million and more coming, by the way. Um, in the till to 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 achieve that and be really aggressive. So what I liked about Patriot was it had scale, it had historic sampling. The historic sampling was high grade, it was spread out, and it was really just a matter of taking the drill, drilling down it, and seeing if it holds up and seeing if it you know was continuous. And now we have a situation where you know Blair's starting to publicly talk about the fact that they're they're going to try to connect 9.7 to 10 kilometers of this over the next several months to see if it is indeed just as I've described one big blob. I believe it is. I'm not a geologist. I can tell you privately uh, behind the scenes, a lot of very well-known geologists that know these systems absolutely believe it's connected. And if that's the case, I mean, today's prices are going to be absolutely laughable. Back to this company. It fits the same criteria. It has scale. It has historic sampling. It consolidated the land package. It's in the right rocks. It's in the right belt. Um, it has the outcrops. The outcrops are wide. Um, you know, 50, 100, up to 130 to 140 meters wide. That speaks to me again early, very early, but this is the opportunity. This is how we did so well with Patriot is by being early. It speaks to me in a way that is easy to understand. It's an intense system. It's spread out. There's, you know, a lot of strike. Again, I don't want to give you the exact, it's multiple, many, many, many kilometers, near double digit kilometers of strike. Um, And then the only thing it needs is a drill to start turning there. And that's going to happen very, very soon. We've talked about the Lasan curve, right? How, how the initial big gains are made on a discovery and proving that out. Nothing gets the resource space excited like a new discovery. It's part of why I'm still so bullish on Patriot. I think they have a bunch of new discoveries that they're going to be announcing here over the next several months. And I think this other company that that, that I stumbled across here over the past year is, is, is on its way to getting a drill or a couple of drills turning, being really aggressive and um, starting to prove out what could potentially be there. But the width, on some of these pegmatite clusters that they've sampled um, is really, really, really impressive. And it speaks to the potential scale. And look, is it going to be another Patriot battery metals? Probably not. I don't think there's going to be another Corvette district for another couple of decades, period, right? Um, but you mentioned the North American supply chain and the downstream um, applications and the interest there and the amount of capital that's coming in, Exxon talking about coming in, and getting into the lithium space. Sa- the Saudis are, are coming in now with deep, deep pockets. They're starting to invest into the resource space and diversifying away from their fossil fuel base, which has been the foundation of its growth for the past, you know, half century or so plus. 
And so when I see all of the capital that's rushing into this specific region and is rushing into North America, I see the credits that the U.S. government is willing to provide, and I see the demand um, that exists, it's just an absolute no-brainer to me, Nick. It's, 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 a, it's just fascinating to me that you can take a supply-demand scenario where we need $116 billion to meet what Benchmark Minerals uh, describes, uh, Mineral Research describes as the high-case lithium demand scenario. There's going to be $116 billion needed not between now and 2050, when most of us will be old, between now and 2030, where, yes, we'll be a little older, but still, well, uh, well, well, hopefully in our prime, right? Uh, hopefully in our prime, but we're talking seven years from now, $116 billion will need to be invested if we're going to keep up with the demand and with the government's stated net zero goals. Now, I'm not one of these government proponents. I, I don't care much for government either side. I don't really have political allegiances. Um, I like as little government as possible. But these are their projections. These are the commitments that they've made. Do I think the goals are lofty? Yes, but only because I don't think there's going to be enough lithium and copper um, to satisfy that demand. But I tell you this, the, t the, the trend is clear. We have tailwinds. And if we can pick three to five companies every 12 months that can deliver 500 to 1,000% gains, and we make a meaningful allocation of capital into those, it's life-changing stuff. I mean, it's 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 life-changing stuff. It's been that way with me for with Patriot. It's been that way for a lot of people around me. And I I, I think I'm about I think I'm about to get on to another quadruple digit winner, Nick. I think the macro piece is there. It's a matter of seeing what Mother Nature left behind. But Mother Nature's already whispering to us that it left behind a bounty. And I just want to see how big that bounty is. Right, because you mentioned it's outcropping its surface. And so last question, and then we'll move on to copper, which you just sure. mentioned there, is you said with Patriot, uh, these pegmatites, spodumene bearing pegmatites were outcropping its surface. And so they literally could, you know, see them from the helicopter or from, a, yeah. you know, airborne surveys or whatever, and then just had to go drill down through them. So those same type of pegmatites are outcropping at this other company, but they have not yet drilled, right? And um, there were some wildfires in the area uh, this summer that that pushed exploration back. And so um, I guess, what's, what's the timeline look like now? I'm hoping that within the next week and a half, uh, we have an announcement that says the drills are turning. And I, I've been in touch with the company as I'm in touch with all the companies that, um, you know, I write checks for and, and recommend to my paying subscribers. And then, then companies, you know, we talk about here on this podcast for free for people that listen that aren't paying subscribers. Um, the company is itching um, to get in the field again. The company is ready to be very aggressive with the drill bit. They have their targets already prioritized. They have drill contractors um, waiting. It's just a matter of getting the okay from the government. And then again, let's go see how big this bounty is. I think it's going to be uh, pretty darn big. I, I wanted to make one last comment. I think Patriot has uh, made it very, very difficult for us to appreciate how unique a 50 million ton or a 75 million ton deposit with with good lithium grades how special those are how unique they are and how profitable they are now and how profitable they're going to be and is this company going to find two three four hundred million tons of lithium i don't know it's got the geology it's got the stripling for it um it's got the team for it but even if it doesn't if it finds a 75 million ton deposit that's going to be worth a lot more than the current market cap by a multiple of at least 10. And, mm -hmm. you know, when I wrote the last two checks that I wrote and when I add to my position in the open market, which I plan on doing here soon, I'm doing that with, you know, with that in mind, just like I have my, you know, $50 Patriot battery metals target that I won't sell the bulk of my position until I get there. And even then I may revisit it depending on what else we've discovered. But with this company, I, I want at least a thousand percent return on my initial capital. Great. So we will have a report about that out here shortly and we'll direct people uh, to it. If you're on Daily Profit Cycle, as you will no doubt see it. And if you're not, you should head over to dailyprofitcycle.com to sign up so you don't miss it. Um, let's do copper because um, you've been busy and um, in the past couple of months you were on a tour um, in Arizona I'm looking at some new type of, of leaching technology. So before we get into it, let me just um, set the stage here. I'm going to read you a couple of 
um, statistics on, you know, uh, projections for copper demand. Um, McKinsey and company says that for the world to meet its net zero emissions targets, it will be short um, 50 million metric tons of, of copper a year by 2030. Um, S&P Global says that as the world goes electric, net zero emissions goals will double demand for the metal from 50 million metric tons um, to 50 million metric tons annually by 2035. And then from Goldman Sachs here, um, they estimate that miners need to spend about $150 billion in the next decade to solve an 8 million ton deficit. Um, and then Bloomberg NEF predicts by, that's new energy finance, by the way, that by 2040, um, the mined output gap could reach 14 million tons. Um, and so I guess the last stat there is the S&P Global says that we need to mine more copper in the next 22 years um, than we've ever mined throughout all of human history. And so um, varying degrees of acuteness there, I guess you could say, uh, is insofar as you know, how much these various entities think we're going to be short. But the overall gist there is that um, in layman's terms, terms, we need a fuck ton more copper in the next um, decade or, or two decades. And a lot of money is going to need to be spent on that. And um, like I did for lithium, I guess, let me set the, the macro background because we normally talk about the week to week and then the micro. So, so let's step back. And these copper mines, the large ones in the, in the world, um, are getting a smaller and, 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 and more expensive to produce. They're getting deeper and, and they've been around for a long, long time. And the new, yep. m- the new deposits that we're finding, um, are lower grades. So, um, as happens, we're turning to technology to, um, uh, try to solve the shortfall. And one of the ways, uh, the industry is doing that is by coming up with new ways to extract uh, the copper similar to, to what they're doing in, in the in the lithium industry, right? So um, there's been a lot of articles about this. Rio Tinto has got its uh, Newton project um, that it's licensing out to various different companies. BHP is working with a company called Jetty um, mm-hmm. the to um, come up with new types of leaching technologies. We're talking about um, using these technologies to, one, mine waste rock that has you know low-grade tailings essentially that are thought to be uh, uneconomic yep. to make them economic um and then two to do some in situ leaching of um copper uh, sort of the way that uh, uranium is um leached in situ um and then produced so um i guess uh, that's a pretty good introduction uh, copper's at you know just under four dollars many people think it'll be you know, seven to to twenty dollars. Um, that one Goldman Sachs report got a little uh, out of control. <laughs> but to, 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 to the upside, if you actually do the math on what they're saying. But um, anyway, so you were you were in Arizona to look at some of these technologies. I'd love to hear um, a bit about that and and who you went with and and what you saw. No, look again. I'm no geologist. I'm definitely not you know a, a chemistry major, but it was pretty fascinating. You know, I I, I went down with a colleague of ours, Mr. John Borquist, uh, in Arizona to look at a at a at a copper mine that um, is 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 working on this copper leaching uh, technology, and it's absolutely fascinating to me because this is a past producing mine that has. Um, as you mentioned, low grade tailings that were in economic for a very, very long time. Infrastructure top notch. There's rail, there's road, there's power. Um, I drove, it was one of the smoothest drives to a, 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 a site visit that I've had I possibly ever, right? Um, you mentioned the lithium triangle. I remember being there in 2016, looking at a, at a lithium uh, company that we did very well on. Um, but that, th- this was the opposite of that, right? This was get out of the air, get out of the airport, get into the rental car, drive an hour and 15 minutes, stop by Starbucks and and go get busy. And so um, the process is fascinating. It's got the potential um, to really contribute to the deficit. You mentioned um, you mentioned the copper deficit and what Goldman Sachs um, thesis was and and then now they went a little overboard. But you know, the bottom line is, if you if, if you believe people like Robert Friedland, and on this I actually do, um, there's there's it's going to be like lithium. There, there's not going to be enough within the next five years for the simple fact that we're so far behind and it takes so long to make discoveries of significance 
and then drill those out to see what's actually there. It's not like the lithium space where at the very least you have a little bit of an advantage where, you know, in a year and a half or so, Patriot could take a bunch of land it consolidated, spend $45 million and come up with a multi-billion dollar asset, right? That's world class already. It takes a lot longer, especially for the more bountiful systems like copper porphyries, right? And so we're, if, if we're talking about discoveries and we're talking about supply and we factor in geopolitical insecurity around the world, I mentioned the assassination of the right-wing candidate in Ecuador here recently. I, I unfortunately believe there's going to be a lot more of that around the world and a lot more volatility. You take all those things and, and then you, you look at the demand and you realize that we're building out infrastructure. Right? And I know, look, I think we're in a recession globally, but that's that's going to pass. Uh, the money printer will be brought back out. Um, <laughs> come hell or high water, if, if, if that's what the Biden administration, future administrations and all administrations around the world have to do to get the economy going where they want it to go. And as it relates to these infrastructure goals, you're going to need the dollars. You're going to need the investment. But even after those dollars are spent and the investment is made, it's still going to take seven to 10 years before we have real meaningful supply come, in, come, come online. And look, I wrote a, a, a big-ish check for you know a company that controls an entire belt in South America. I think they're going to make you know a ton of copper, silver, gold discoveries. I own, I have exposure to like 1.8 million shares of that company. It's my second largest holding on a cash position wise next to Patriot Battery Metals. And I... I, I a part of me felt guilty for writing at the price that I wrote it because I think I'm going to make like 25, 30 times my money on this on the low end of it. It might take me a couple of years, but as I try to preach to subscribers, um, I'm willing to wait a couple of years and then willing to be wrong even for a couple of years, as long as the macro thesis and the execution on the ground um, continues to move forward in the direction that it should be. I'll wait a year or two for a 10,000% a, a gain or a 5,000% gain. I'll wait a year or two for a thousand percent gain and, and and knowing that they don't all work out. But, you know, in this case, I think it's going to work out. And I think the copper thesis is as solid in the mid to long term as as the lithium thesis is and maybe even better, maybe even better because of how tough it is um, to make these discoveries of significance and then actually get them permitted and then actually build them and then get them to market. I think we're going to have a couple of years where people are scratching their heads going, how did we miss this? How did we get in a position where Copper is eight dollars a pound now, and we still don't have enough. And I, and, well, and I think it's headed there in the next couple of years. It, yeah, well, that's why this you know blue water leaching technology is is so exciting. If it takes um, you know however many years to to find and, and de-risk and, and permit a mine here, you have a technology that can be applied to existing tailings, right? And um, uh, probably would um, well not probably would definitely have a shorter timeline to to production in terms of how long it takes to leach, but also would um, have a, a, a faster timeline as far as permitting is concerned because it's already a, a disturbance and would be, um, you know, reprocessed to take even more of those, um, you know, metals out of the, out of the waste. So, um, we also, you know, put together a video about that. Like I said, you were, you were out there on a tour. And so, uh, we've got a new video out. Some people might've seen it, but we wanted to spend a couple of minutes uh, talking about it so uh, we could direct people's attention to it because it's worth putting on your radar. Yes. Um, you know, as this uh, whole situation develops, as, um, you know, the demand uh, rise comes into place, you know, there's going to be new technologies that emerge um, that you need to keep your finger on the, the pulse of. And so um, that's why we wanted to talk about this, this new copper leaching technology as well. So check out that video. And of course, we'll, we'll have a link up for you to do so. No, and then let me add this. You know, I don't think it's a coincidence. Last week and then for the last month or two, and then you longer, right? Um, we've been talking about mine hub technologies and the fact that they're digitizing uh, the commodity supply chain and the fact that no one else on the planet is 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 as advanced or has the kind of partnerships that this company has. So the you know what Warren Buffett describes as a moat, right? That 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 unique advantage that you have over other companies when 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 you're building out a business. This company has that moat in space, MineHub Technologies, when it comes to what they're doing specifically. Not a coincidence, they just signed a three-year deal with the world's largest copper producer, Cadelco, to get that done, right? And and I, I mentioned them because the amount of partners and the quality of the partners that they have are top-notch, world-class. Well, this company that I went to see in Arizona in this video that we shot on site, 
also happens to have partnerships with some of the top copper producers on the planet that are investing their own money to advance this process in exchange for access to the technology. And the reason they're doing so is because if you're a multi-billion dollar blue chip uh, copper producer and your ore grades are declining and you're not making the discoveries of significance, but you have uneconomic tailings and or uneconomic portions of your deposit that are amenable to this process, well, all of a sudden you just turned dirt into dollars. And if you can figure out a way to turn dirt into dollars and you have a lot of dirt, that can get very profitable very, very quickly. And and again, the company that's pioneering these studies um, is a fascinating one. The process is a fascinating one to me. But even with this technology, um, it's not go- it's not going to be enough in the next five to ten years. And so the the uh, the kind of table that's been set for us as speculators in this space, high risk, high reward. Everybody should understand that. But man, there's a lot of tailwinds for us. It, again, I I felt half bad, bad writing that check because I'm looking around and going, okay, I know the company's a little boring right now, but it's going to be drilling in a few months and then it's going to be drilling for five years. And I just think people are asleep at the wheel. But again, this is what this is what I wake up to and go to bed with at night. And I I, I love it. And hopefully uh, I'm able to communicate that to, to subscribers and share some opportunities with you all after paying subscribers get those. I think it's, um, Brent Cooks now Joe Mazumdar's exploration insights that turns rocks into money. I like I like dirt into dollars better. Um, seems like it's easier to find dirt in certainly <laughs> uneconomic waste rock than um, the economic deposits those gentlemen are um, looking uh, for. But no, so I watched the video and you get to see the the blue water process. Um, you get to hear folks talk about it. Uh, it's definitely worth the the watch. So so we'll put that up and then. Um, I guess that was it for me this week. What else you got? No, but look, um, I, me- I mentioned uh, I mentioned Maui. I I, I mentioned um, you know the 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 tragedy in Ecuador. Um, I, you know, I'll say this: it's um, it's election time. You know, around the world for a lot of governments. And I talked about the fourth turning, and I still haven't started the book because I'm finishing my 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 last book that I said I wanted to finish first. But um, I think we're going to see a lot more volatility, unfortunately, Nick. And I think globally. Um, it's a great time to, to to just work on 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 ourselves and our communities and each other. And I, I hate to sound corny and hate to sound like Ellen every week, right? But just find more of what we have in common and try to ignore some of the differences if at all possible. If they don't matter, who cares, guys? Somebody has pink hair. You don't like pink hair. You only date redheads. Don't date her. You can still be nice, right? So, you know, some of our divisions go a lot deeper than pink hair and red hair, but Hopefully I'll get the metaphor of the analogy. Um, Just be kinder to each other. That's it. Um, Other than that, look, Patriots got five rings turning. I'm excited there. Um, They have $160 million and a whole bunch coming from 75 cent warrants um, before before year end. They don't have to go to the bank for a couple of years if they don't want to. And so that's exciting. Bravo Mining remains exciting. MineHub Technologies is executing beautifully. Those are, you know, three of my top holdings right now. Um, and then this other company that, 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 you know, we're going to be sharing a special report with next week to paying subscribers. Um, I think that's my third largest holding maybe after the copper gold silver company and of course, Patriot battery metals. So I'm as excited as I've been in quite some time. I'm generally a pretty optimistic guy, but I think the environment we're going into is going to be very, very, very profitable. And that's coming off, you know, a couple of big wins for all of us, obviously that have been, life-changing for some of us. So uh, a lot to be excited for. I'm looking forward to being at the Precious, Beaver Creek Precious Metal Summit in September. If you're there, stop by and say hello. We'd love to chat with you all. Um, and I'm also looking um, forward to being with Brian London and his wonderful staff at the New Orleans Investment Conference. That was the very first conference I ever went to, folks. On the retail side, I bought my own ticket. I you know, paid for my hotel. I took notes. I went and saw the speakers. So it's really neat to me and kind of full circle to be, be able to be invited to speak at that conference every year. I try to take as much time as I possibly can. And I know you do too as well, Nick. Nick is always a partner in crime when it comes to the conference. I know you have a presentation. I believe you're anchoring um, a panel there. And of course, we'll oh my be gosh. doing- Yes, sir. And of course, we'll be doing this Bizarro World episode live um, from New Orleans. So if any of you get the opportunity, 
reach out, uh, let us know. We'd love to say hi to you. We'll introduce you to a few of the people there, give you our thoughts and uh, shake your hand. We'd love to do that with subscribers and and listeners. And we appreciate all of it. You guys allow us to do, guys and gals allow us to do what we do for a living and, and we love what we do. So it's a good way to say thank you. Well said, nothing to add from me. Lots of long-term trends to look forward to and profit from. And I too will be at those conferences and um, look forward to seeing uh, folks from the industry and uh, readers and members as well. Supposed to remind you all to make sure that you check us out at dailyprofitcycle.com forward slash subscribe for all of our market insight, updates, market commentary, and rants and raves from yours truly, Mr. Hodge, and our brilliant colleagues at Daily Profit Cycle. That's all I got. This was, uh, what, 200 and 30 first episode. I can't believe we've been doing this for over 231 weeks, Nick. Am I am I I'm starting to am I, I'm starting to show my age with a little white hairs are coming down? My wisdom hairs. I got a couple over here. It was time to end, Gerardo. Yeah, we're gonna be all right. But that's oh, all yeah. I got. That's all I got, everybody. Have a great week. Enjoy the rest of the summer. Stay cool out there. Be kind to each other. Have some fun. And um, we'll see you back here next week. See ya. Hey there, you independent-minded investor. If you like this video, make sure to tell us so by clicking the like button below. Subscribe to our channel so you never miss another one. And share it with everyone you know on social media. You can also click the link in the description below to check out more information-packed videos just like this one. Thanks for watching.